Hello there, everybody, and welcome to a new video for Age of Wonders 4. In this one, I got my first mod review. I'm doing one for the Expanded Cultural Units mod, which adds in four new units, at this very moment at least, for each culture, ranging from tiers 1 to 4. So, I'm going to introduce all the units in this video. So, we're going to have one passage for each culture. Timestamps are down below, and since we have a lot of stuff on the plate, let's get started with the dark culture so on tier one the mod adds in the thrall so thralls are basic fighter units that lack many distinctions they inflict weakness which is really really cool because usually melee units uh, don't so this is one interesting part about them and the other thing is they can hurt themselves and heal other people for twice that damage this is so interesting since it is a free action it is on range and yeah this is really really synergistic with many many strategies and i really like these guys especially since they can weaken units and that's pretty nice but since it's a tier one unit there's not much more to say let's get on over to the next one the tier two unit the shadow legionnaire so the dark culture gains now access also to a shield unit so these guys are Basically, standard frame for shield units. We have shield defense, we have a heavy shield. That's not so standard, but not unusual on tier 2 units either. But the real major unique part here is the leeching guard. So, weakened people attacking this guy. He has higher resistances, and he's also going to reflect damage back. This is really, really cool. And this gives you an opportunity to just park these guys in front of your enemy, support them with some HP, and watch the enemy whack himself. Very, very synergistic with the Night Guards, and I really like these guys, guys for the Tier 2 department. In Tier 3, we gain access to the Headhunter, which is one hell of a guy. We have finally a Skirmisher unit in this roster. We can inflict Bleeding with standard attacks. Nice damage over time effect. Throwing Knives can weaken. And the Ruthless Execution skill is a blink on target with three squares uh, distance. It's very cheap to use as well. And either 50 or 20 per, uh, points of damage. The lower the guy, the higher the chance to execute the guy. So, wow. This is just uh, one hell of a skirmisher unit they're tier three so they can be fairly easily mass produced and they are something for every occasion i really really like this unit it's a worthy addition to the dark knights and as at tier four we got the overlord sign a straight on fighter unit which is very simple lifesteal on basic attack and no escape lets you pull an enemy back towards you, weaken them, steal some life, and keep clobbering. Also some slight damage on top of that. So, these guys also have a weakening aura, so yeah, massive front line. You know, give these boys a little bit of support, and they will shred the enemy into pieces, and there is really a lot of strategic potential and no escape, since it's framed no escape, but you can actually really do a lot of different things with that for example pull enemies away and all that but most importantly my main thing about these guys is they are so darn resilient and hard to kill with all that lifesteal implemented on them and since it's a tier 4 unit chances are you already have a lot of your build going on until you hit that point so that's the dark roster what changes well you go a lot more supporty but i appreciate the fact that there are no straight out supporters now in the roster you do have life steal you do have more defenses in the shadow legionnaire and you do have sort of a supporter in the thrall but you still lack the straight out support it's still like if you add in some serious supporters, these guys go really, really crazy. And yeah, this roster is really fun to play and highly recommendable. Now then, let's get on over to the next culture. And now into the industrious roster. These guys got a lot of new backup as well. So first off, the Sapper joins the ranks of the industrious. A tier one fighter unit, which comes with a nasty ranged attack no cooldown it's a single it's a single smack shredding down the uh, defenses of the enemy and 
They also act as demolisher units. They come with the siege breaker trait, so you can use these guys to speed up sieges. These boys are really, really interesting as they shred defenses. They are a decent frontline as well, and their demolisher trait gives them a really useful thing throughout the board. As a tier 1 unit, again, there is not that much more to say, but I really do appreciate what they bring. Especially the destruction of defenses is something that suits the industrious roster very, very well. So, in the tier 2, we get even two units here on this faction. We gain the Cataphract, which is basically just a mounted cavalry unit tier two nothing too special there the pack hunter is uh, from the wolf mount so don't mind that you have a charge attack you have the watchful trait so you gain a little bit more retaliation tax but apart from that it gives you straight out access to a shock unit and there's not much more to say about that except for the industrious roster really appreciates this unit the shield breaker is another shock unit so we go shock heavy on tier 2 and i really like what this does the play style changes in a decent way and these guys come with a stun only one turn cooldown so you can do that thing quite often they are still quite fragile but with this roster on tier 2 you have a lot more fun and offensive qualities on the industries without making them busted so tier 3 adds in the sharpshooter which is basically the upgraded version of the arbalist you have a ranged attack that ignores a portion of the defense which is amazing and overdraw uh, overdraw crossbow is still very very similar to what we were used to but all in all they can now use it every turn and it deals a decent amount of extra damage and on top of that they punish ranged attackers back this is a really really interesting upgrade since the back uh, the thorns effect there is quite effective considering that i often try to take out uh, enemies from afar so this is a nice little extra so Tier 4 brings us the Battle 4 man, the Tier 4 shield unit of the Industrious, and this guy is quite something. For one, he has the standard traits of every shield unit, quite brawny and beefy, has the heavy shield and the shield defense and watchful, but the real major thing is of course this special skill, hammer and anvil. So whenever he or his adjacent buddies land an attack, they gain bolstered defense or bolstered resistance and they gain strengthened when they are hit. This alters the regular interaction of the industrious uh, faction a little bit, in case you aren't too familiar with it. I'll sum it up. Usually, you get, uh, you get the resistances when you are smacked, and you gain no strengthened. These guys gain resistances when they go into a fence, and they gain strength when they get hit, and they give that to their buddies around them. So the Battle 4 man is really what the name implies, a massive dude to just put into your roster to make the rest of your guys be way more effective because in a nutshell hammer and anvil is just a better version of the bolstering base mechanics and i love it it was really really cool and makes the industrious roster go way harder in the early game i really like those tier 2 units they fill in that gap that made the industries a little bit boring before the mod and the tier 3 and tier 4 units add in strategic options without being broken per se the sharpshooter is in my opinion a little bit underpowered i'll see what the if there will be something some changes right now it feels a little bit too samey to the arbalist in my humble opinion at least who knows what will change anywho that's been these guys let's head on over to the next guys and we continue with the high culture so the new toys for the high culture the tier one add-on is the hospitaller so we gain a support unit that is available right from the get-go with a 30 hp heal and one interesting caveat since he has a repeating attack it's the first support unit that i ever see with that mechanic so these guys can do quite a uh, quite an interesting pattern when you want to have builds that 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 add into that but most of the time you will use these guys just as a very cheap available source of healing since they cannot awaken in anything they have to rely on support enchantments to really shine but uh, you know once you get there these guys can quite can pack 
quite a punch and they're super useful from the beginning. And the tier 2 unit we gain is the Templar. So we gain a fighter unit which has the Mage Slayer trait, so they deal a massive amount of extra damage to battle mages and supporters. And to add some icing on the cake, they also reflect back spirit damage when they get hit by magic attacks. So these guys are mage killers, like the like this thing here implies. But yeah, this is pretty fun to play around with these guys. They are resilient, they can get into the face of the backline, and if they get caught, they are still quite formidable against any enemy, but uh, <laughs> dare to get them into the backline. Quite a fun toy. So, the Radiant Cavalier is a new shock unit we gain access to, never mind the spider that comes from my current build, but uh, they gain a unit that has a new form of awakening, and that's Inspiring Awakening. That buffs morale by 20 points, which is a huge amount, and awakens the unit. Also, we gain Inspiring Presence, which makes morale gains even faster. So, these bad boys are really quite useful. They are somewhere between of a shock unit and a supporter due to the fact that they can do this really nifty awakening thing. So you have something they can do in the beginning of the fight and their inspiring presence also adds in something to the um to the to the utility side of these and they gain the shield of light thing so they have a nice amount of resistances as well once awakened. So tier four brings us a support unit the Phoenix Keeper. So the those guys inflict burning on their base attack, but the Awakening Burst is what is really sick about these guys. So damage in a two hex radius, and we gain Awakening and Healing for the caster and two friendly units in the vicinity. This is brutal. It has some cooldown, sure thing, but it's also a demolisher thing. So speaking about demolishers, these guys can destroy fortified obstacles and they come with a second life due to Fury Rebirth, and they gain the extra retaliation thing. So this mod does a lot of weird um, awakening traits on these, or unfamiliar awakening traits, but you get used to it. So the Phoenix Keeper is, uh, wow, well, damage and support, and they don't go n too nuts in terms of damage by themselves, but they are darned hard to kill, and they add in more awakening to your roster and they fly don't forget about the flying this gives you an amazing extra amount of battlefield mobility so the high culture gains more emphasis on their supportive ways while gaining some units they were lacking in their roster be it late but a shock unit really fits well into their uh, build a super early supporter feels darned well and the mage killer unit just fits very well into the flare and these guys are pretty nice in the mid game so all in all good stuff feels very very fitting to the concept so let's get on over to the next bunch and let's continue with the feudal roster so we got when we go into tier one with these guys access to a new unit called light cavalry nothing too special about these guys they are just your standard issue charge strike cavalry unit and as you see here they can also inherit the traits of your culture so Special mounts are something the feudals can use right from tier one, and I think that fits to their role quite well. But these guys will always stay vulnerable, easy to take out, very, very fragile, but it's an early accessible shock unit, and this is sometimes all you need. The Armored Pikeman is the tier two unit of this bunch, and they are the evolved version now of the peasant pikemen. The peasant pikemen don't evolve into defenders anymore with this mod. The armored pikemen is in so far interesting as he has only one really new trait and this is this one. His adjacent units gain charge resistance and some defense. I love this. This is such a grand idea to give the charge resistance off to your buddies because that's what shield, what, what spear units can do. And well, apart from that, they are just uh, the standard issue um, whole arm unit, nothing too special to note here about that. The Huntsman is another tier 2 unit we gain, and these guys are really, really interesting. So they gain extra damage against animal and cavalry units. They have a, another ranged attack, just like it is standard for skirmisher units, also with the same extra on this end, and they can immobilize single units as a free 
action. So yeah, these guys have really a lot going on for themselves and they are super interesting tier 2 units and they give you what I personally find extremely interesting about them, the power to control the battlefield when it comes down to cavalry. Because you have cavalry slaughterers and the enemy usually shouldn't. So this makes your own cavalry a lot more safer and if the enemy starts to spam mounted units, the huntsman is way to go. Also very powerful against animal summoners, obviously. So the other tier 3 unit, well these guys don't have a, uh, a tier 3 unit, is a new evolution of the knight. So the knights can now evolve into banneret knights, which are the more the next more powerful version of them. And these guys are really one of a kind. So they have the base uh, attack and the same baseline traits as a knight, but they gained icon of chivalry. So they are dirty cheap in upkeep for a tier four unit. Seriously, it's only a third of what you regularly pay in terms of Imperium. They also gain Inspiring Killer, Inspiring Presence. So they are now really, really good at buffing the morale of your troops. And basically you just get a uh, night unit or just playing your knights longer. At first I was disappointed about these guys, but then I realized that this is just a free freaking upgrade for my knights. And then I realized that I was ungrateful. And these guys are actually amazing because they just make your powerful knight unit just a smidge more powerful when you play them longer. So the champion is the tier 4 unit of these boys and uh, he has Frenzy. It's a tier 4 fighter unit with Frenzy. That means every time they land an attack they go stronger. They have heroic aura so they are strong. They, they make their bodies around them stronger and they also gain double morale bonus when they kill stuff. So all in all the champion is a very very straightforward unit for a tier 4 unit but the fact that you can mass produce these bad boys is amazing since they make one hell of a front line that goes crazy once they have landed a few blows. So where does that put, put this roster in a picture? So I think the feudals are now finally the masters of cavalry with this build and I love it. They also emphasize more on what they are already good at, like the champions are really just a uh, fitting part. They are not special per se, but you can make them special. And this is what I really appreciate because that follows the the way I played Feudals in the vanilla game. So really good stuff. Armored Pikeman, nothing to not like about that. I find it much more well reasonable that the peasant pikeman now turned into another pikeman. So yeah, there we go. I really like this one. Let's get on over to the next bunch. And now into the Mystics roster. So we gain, when we play with this mod, a new tier one unit called the Cosmic Channeler. This is our new fighter. He's a melee unit that sunders the resistances on the enemy, so very useful on his own, since he doesn't deal any physical damage. But his major sales point is the mono release skill, which gives you just more casting power right from the get-go. They are the perfect throwaway unit for tier 1. You can fill your ranks cheap with these guys, have more spell casting, and don't mind if they die at the front line. I love these guys. They fit so well into the early swarmy tactics that you can play with mystics really really good. So on tier 2 we finally gain a archer unit for these boys, but according to how the mystic work they deal almost no physical damage at all. I really, really appreciate that little detail because otherwise th this unit would feel a little bit busted. They gain the Cosmic Shot, which is basically a alteration of the herbalist skill from the Industrious. It knocks people out of their defense modes, it removes retaliation attacks, and it sunders resistances, and it is a tad bit of a splash. So, and so far, this is more powerful than the Arbalesta, but it is very, very similar to skill. I just went for that comparison. But yeah, it also deals damage to adjacent units. So yeah, you have a uh, defense buster with these guys. I really like them. Tier 3 brings us the Immortals, finally a shock unit for the Mystic roster. These guys have also this resistance sundering thing going on for themselves, and they are pretty heavy on physical damage, finally. And the Cosmic Rebuke is just a 6 damage for a reflection thing when they get smacked, which is really, really good. Works only on melee though. 
Immortal Spirit is a really cool thing, but I haven't the I haven't had the Immortal Spirit spawn yet. I don't know if it is bugged currently when I tried it out. All it did was that the Immortal was resurrected when I uh, when I won the fight. So I don't know what about this. Feel free to leave me a con comment about that. It felt a little bit jittery when I tried to, to work with it. On tier 4, we gain the Grand Vizier, so finally a tier 4 battle mage unit. These guys deal a lot of damage per se, and the Arcane Artillery is a 1 hex radius burst. Burning, frozen, and electrified. Only a 30% chance, but this is uh, 21 damage and a 1 hex radius. You can't mass produce them, so really, really big deal. So... You might be a little bit surprised to see that these guys have nothing going on for themselves except for being floating, but I thought about it a little bit longer and realized add in all those dirty, rotten enchantments of a Battle Mage late game and these guys go crazy. And you also have this sick bombardment skill where I think personally the status inflictions are really, really good. These boys synergize darn well with status infliction resistance, you know reduce the enemy status resistance. This is really good on these. So the Mystics roster gets a little bit of the things it was lacking in the vanilla game. Some extra melee throwaway unit for the swarmy playstyle. Finally a ranged attacker that has some sort of a AoE splash. Love it. A shock unit that is hard to kill and a super souped up massive battle AO, uh, battle mage AoE for the tier 4 that synergizes darn well with the Spellbreaker. So what's not to like about that? Let's get on into the last bunch of this video. And last but not least, into the Barbarian roster. So, with the Barbarians, we gain access to a Tier 1 Spear unit. The Spear Bearer is a wonderful throwaway unit. He has nothing going on for himself except for being cheap. He has a low maintenance, he's also cheaper to recruit than other units, and he's darn spiky. So these guys are really good when you cannot go as offensive as you want to with Sunderers because the enemy might be too hot uh, hitting when, when, you are killing, when you're trying to kill them. Just add in a couple of spear bearers because these guys will always get their chance to fight back. I love them. They're a really nice addition to the roster. On tier 2 we gain a battle mage unit, the Wild Witch. So the Wild Witch has poison damage fitting to the Barbarian roster and she goes with a Blight Rate skill. An AoE bombardment skill that also inflicts Sundered defenses. Really amazing, really really awesome to have. It's one piece of nuke that just fits darn well into the battle plan of the Barbarians. I really really like that. On tier 3 we gain the Shield Maiden. The <laughs> I, I really, really can't say how overpowered I think these shield units are. So for one, they have frenzy, so whenever they attack, they get strengthened. They have shields, because of course it's a shield unit. But most importantly, they also have a greater shield bash, because, you know, they are the upgraded shield unit of this culture. So also a stun chance on the enemy. And to add something extra on this, you have the rush of battle, so they gain extra HP whenever somebody on the enemy side dies. So... They are really, really hot to kill, and they have so much damage potential on their side. Once the Frenzy kicks into its full extent, that's 50% more damage by just doing what they're supposed to do. I love this unit. I think they're a little bit too strong, in my honest opinion. Warchief is your tier 4 unit. So this guy is your end-of-the-line shock unit. It's basically a bit like an upgraded Berserker, as you have still the Berserker's Rage on this guy, you still have the Frenzy on this guy, so everything the Berserker has, the Warchief basically has on himself as well. But they also come with the Unleash Rage skill, which gives your friendlies a 2 freaking hex radius, 20 persons more damage. This is interesting, because it is not a strengthening buff or anything. I don't know how it's coded, but it sounds like it is an extra buff that, oh, that is applicable on all the other vanilla buffs in the game already. With the downside of losing a, ten, a little bit of resistance and defense, but seriously, this is massive. Don't underestimate this one. 20% more damage is always one of those big things that add in a lot of damage to your uh, build, and these guys are tier 4, so 
On top of that, they have the Rush of Battle for themselves as well, so darned hard to kill there too. So this Barbarian roster change as well, it makes them way more in your face. It makes them really hard to kill while maintaining their major weakness being quite one-sided in their damage profile, still only physical and blind in here, and being a little bit on the weak side on the supportive uh, way, so only the War Shamans keeping the only thing um, in your roster, staying the only thing in your roster being a support, and the Shield Maidens are the only supporty unit. Yes, they are super strong, but they are not going to heal anybody. So. Pretty good stuff. I love this mod. In a summary, I can only recommend it when you grew a little bit bored of the vanilla game because this mod pack adds in amazing options into your standard game experience. So feel free to leave me your comments down below. Let me know once this video grows outdated because I might be missing it. I don't know. Might be the case. I'll be adding in the new things that have changed until then. I hope you had a good time, leave a thumbs up if you did, consider subscribing and check out the description box. There is a playlist leading to all the Age of Wonders 4 info videos I did and I'd be super happy if you'd give it a look. Apart from that, have a wonderful day everybody and see you soon.